Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today you're gonna learn all about the reduce function. Stick around to the end to learn all my tips and tricks. Let's jump into this. So before we jump into this video, a quick word from our friends over at Skillshare. If you enjoy my videos and you want more free courses, then check this out. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions of people come together to take the next step in their creative journey. The thing I love about Skillshare is that there are no ads. They're always launching new premium classes and they also recommend really interesting classes. So before you know it, I'm actually no longer watching TV or Netflix. All I do is watch Skillshare while I'm actually eating my food. Most classes are under 60 minutes, so they should be able to fit any schedule, whether you're super busy or you've got a little bit more time on your hands. I've actually gone ahead and dropped the React Basics 101 one entire class on Skillshare. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description are gonna get a free month worth of premium Skillshare. And you're gonna be able to, with that, access the React Basics which I've uploaded. On top of that, you're gonna get access to thousands and thousands of courses available on Skillshare's platform. I've actually been checking out a amazing video editing class at the moment by Ali Abdel, where I was actually able to find out how I could use my iPad to add animated handwriting in into my videos to level up my production value. And now I'm making the best use out of my iPad as well as leveling up my Final Cut production game. So this is just an example of the amazing value that I've got since I've signed up at Skillshare. And if you guys want to go ahead and benefit from this just like I have, then go ahead and remember the first 1000 people to go ahead and grab that link are gonna get one free month of Skillshare premium, which means that you can access my React Basics 101 class. It's completely free, you have nothing to lose. and then after that you can go ahead and continue if you're enjoying what you see on Skillshare. Yo what is going on guys welcome back to another video in today's lesson I'm going to teach you all about the JavaScript reduce function and how it is an absolute game changer once you master it. It can seem a little bit tricky but we're going to break it down today we're going to go through a bunch of examples and I'm going to show you why it's going to be one of your most crucial tools in your JavaScript toolkit. Let's jump into this. So there's four things that you need to know about when we're using a reducer function. Firstly, we use it around arrays, right? It's pretty much gonna be used whenever we're dealing with any kind of array or array-like object. Now, there's four little tips I've got on the screen here to go ahead and help you out. Firstly, the reduce method executes a reducer function for array elements. So we can't use it directly on an object. We can't use it directly on a string, that kind of thing. We have to convert it first to an array. Then we can go ahead and use something like a reduce on it. The second thing is the reduce function is primarily there to take an array and convert it down or condense it down into a single value. So let's think about this. Imagine we had a basket full of items. So we had a basket array where we have several different objects inside, each one rep representing an item. Imagine each one had a price and I wanted to work out the sum of all of the items in my basket. Or you could use a for loop. I'm going to show you an example of this soon. But the ideal thing here would be to use a reduce function. This would go ahead and actually combine each of the items in the basket down based on whatever we want. In this case, it could be the item's price. And it would go ahead and convert an array into a single value, which would be the total price. Now, the reduce method doesn't work for empty arrays. So it's not going to execute the function if your array is empty. And the final thing to know is that the reduce function does not modify the original array. So in this case if you do want to keep the value afterwards make sure you store it into a variable so let's jump into our first example of where you might want to use a reduce function so let's have a look at the following here firstly is the syntax in how we use a reduce function so it attaches to an array object so in this case we've got an array we simply do dot reduce and then we've got a function in here I'm going to explain all of this very shortly. Well, where might we want to use a reduce function? So let's take an example of a array of numbers. So in this case, let's take our array over here. So I'm going to go ahead and say our array is going to be a sequence of numbers. So let's go ahead and add in a few more numbers to this to make it a bit more interesting. So here we've got a bunch of different numbers. Now I want to go ahead and accumulate the value of all of these numbers. So essentially turn this array into one value. Now, traditionally, you would have to write a loop in this case, right? So in this case, we've got a dummy function here, which is called sum, which is going to take our array. So in this case, imagine if I took our array as we have at the top. As you can see, it's working. It's, it's going ahead and converting this to 44. Now, how does this work? 
right? In our, inside of our function, we have a variable sum equals zero. And then all we're doing is we've got a for loop, which is pretty much going through each of these. Make sure you check out the loops lesson if you're stuck on JavaScript loops. But here it's essentially just accumulating that value each time it loops through each individual item in the array and it's adding to the overall sum returning the sum value at the end of the function so this loop's going to run through each of the numbers add it up in our sum variable and return the overall number as we can see here now this is cool it works but we've got new more modern approaches this is where a reduce would be exactly ideal so let's refactor this into a reduce function now there's two ways to write a reduce function i'm going to show you both so that way you get the exposure to all the different types of usages however but I do have a preferred method and I'm going to show you how to very soon. So we're going to take the same function that we had previously. We're going to have our array of numbers. In fact, I'm actually going to copy the one that we had earlier. So I'm going to have our array of numbers similar to how we had earlier. And the call is exactly the same. The only difference here, guys, is that we are instead going to refactor the actual function to make it use a reduce function instead. And then I'm going to show you how to actually get rid of this overall function so we don't need it. So as you can see inside of our sum, now we're gonna create something called a reducer. What this reducer has is it has two arguments and it can have more and we're gonna explain what those are in, in just a second. But first argument is the accumulator. So in this case, it's gonna be the thing in which we wanna start accumulating from. So typically you need to give an initial value. So in this case, we've given zero. So this would actually begin with a value of zero. The next thing is each of the individual items that you're looping through. So in this case, we've just given it a generic value. You could in this case say number as you loop through each number and so forth. And what we're going to do is every time we loop through, all we're doing is we're incrementing the total, which starts at zero, to the value. So in this case, one would add to three, become four, four would add to five, and so forth. And we'll go ahead and accumulate numbers. And then what we're doing is we're using our reducer function. Now, in this case, what we're doing is we're passing in an array. So in this case, we're passing our array, and this is coming into our function like so. And we're executing the reduce function, passing in the reducer and the initial value. Remember, the initial value is going to be the initial value for this. So this would essentially be zero, and then it would be zero plus the first value. Then it would keep track of that. So it would be this would become one afterwards. Then it would become four and so forth. And it would keep accumulating up and eventually return that value here to 44. Okay. In this way, we're reducing our array down into a single value. Now, this way works, sure, but I have a much cleaner way that I prefer to do things. So this is the kind of way that is textbook, right? So you're gonna get see you're gonna see this all over tutorials online. However, I prefer to use direct single line arrow functions when I'm doing my reduce, and you're gonna see why right now. So let's go ahead and cut this out. I'm gonna go ahead and show you my favorite approach to doing this. So the reason why I like this approach is because it's a lot cleaner, and we're gonna explain exactly why, and I'm gonna break down the additional parameters that you have inside the reduce function as well. So in this case, we've got our, a variable that we're gonna store the overall accumulation into, and we're gonna go ahead and call our reduce function on our array. So this is our array right here. And we're going to say array.reduce, okay? And in this case, we're actually doing the function all inside of here. Now, to make things very simple, okay, all you need to think about it is all we have is an arrow function here, right? There's simply an arrow function, and then we have the initial value, okay? So in this case, we've got an arrow function, and we've got the initial value. Now, this doesn't just have to be a number. You can have an object here. You can have an array here. Basically, are going ahead, taking your array and converting it to the data type that you give your initial value. So in this case, we're taking our array and converting it into a number. Now, inside of our function, this is where the magic is really happening. Okay, so you have four parameters. Two are pretty much mandatory, and the third and fourth are optional. Okay, so the first one is the accumulator function. So this is basically going to be a variable that we're going to go ahead and add to every single time we loop through this. So initially, it's going to be given a value of zero. The next thing is, as we loop through, I need a variable to keep track of all of these so I can go ahead and actually use the item as we loop through it. In this case, we can go ahead and just call this one item, or in this case, number. It can be contextual. I'm just going to say that this is the item, right? And or in this case, you can say current value. It doesn't matter, okay? Then we have the index. So the index is basically 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The point, <laughs> the point at which you're inside the loop. And then we have the array, Okay, the array is always going to refer to the entire array. So in some cases, you may need to access the entire array whilst you're in the loop. That's how you're going to go ahead and do it.
So in this case, what you want to do is simply tell your reducer what you want to happen every single time it loops through. So here in this case, we're going to say return the total plus the item. And in this case, it's going to, in the first run, it's going to say zero plus the first item, which will then become one. It will return that to your reducer and then it will jump through to the next value and it will keep this value as your new total. And as you can see, it will go ahead, run through all of your values until it accumulates the new value. So in this case, if I was to log out some, you see we have a value of 44. Now notice how we have a single line of code here. Using ES6 arrow functions, we can make this a lot neater. We can do an implicit return. So get rid of the squiggly brackets, get rid of that. And as you can see now, we have a one line piece of code. Now, if we don't need our index and we don't need the initial array, we can get rid of those. And as you can see, we have a lovely simple reduce function. So this is a really, really clean way of going ahead and condensing down your JavaScript array guys. So imagine each of these were individual items. So imagine you had a list of different basket items. So in this case, you had an item, which was an iMac, and you had the price, which was, let's just imagine it was 1000. And then you had a second object, which was an item, which was an iPad. And this price was, let's just go ahead and say this price was 500. Okay, so very simple examples here. So imagine we had two different items inside of our array. Right now, at this point, when we've got our two different items, what I can now do is if I want to go ahead and accumulate the price, all I would have to do is so I'd say the total, which would start at zero. The item is going to be the each individual object as we iterate through. And all I want to do is go ahead and add the item dot price to the total. And as you can see, it's accumulated the total values inside of our basket. So in this case, it's added up their values and you can see we've got 1,500. So extremely clean, eradicates the need for any for loops, any of that additional stuff. This is your go-to whenever you want to accumulate. Now, while reduce is great for summing, you can also use it for a lot more than that. So let's jump into our next example. So the accumulator, when we're reducing, can be used for more than just summing up values, right? It can be used for numbers, it can be used for arrays, it can be used for plain JavaScript objects, and even promises. You just simply have to manage what you're doing in the correct way. You just have to pay close attention to your initial value. So remember, if you're reducing down an array of numbers or prices into a an, into one number, make sure your initial value and each time you iterate makes sense. So you eventually want to go down into a number. If you start mixing your data types, you're going to get some unexpected bugs and behaviors. So let's imagine you have a list or an array of JavaScript dates. You want to find the most recent date. Well, I'm going to show you just how we can do that. So here we have a list of dates, as you can see here. Now, all I'm doing here is I'm actually mapping. And if you are confused with mapping in JavaScript, check out that lesson and come back to this and carry on. All we're doing here is we're taking a list of four date strings. And as you can see, the third is actually the most recent one. But how are we going to find out? Right. Well, in this case, we're mapping each of the individual dates to a date object. And this is going to return back something similar to this. It's similar to a timestamp inside of JavaScript, right? Now, what we're doing here is we're actually doing a reduce function. And as you can see, this could be seen as quite tricky, but we're going to break it down. It's going to make a lot of sense. So as you can see here, I'm, I've got our variable max date, but the thing you want to pay attention to is this. So we've got dates.reduce, and here is our accumulator function. So remember, just split things out initially, and then it won't be so scary. So we've got two parts to our reduce function. We've got the arrow function, and we've got the initial starting value. So in this case, the arrow function, telling our reducer to do every time it loops through, the initial value is the first string inside of our dates, right? So if I was to go ahead and firstly log out our dates, you will see that we've got four dates in the form of timestamps, okay? And you can see this might be a little bit confusing as to what's going on, but just remember, this is not a direct string. You know, it doesn't look the exact same because timestamps aren't written the same as text strings, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this for a second. Go ahead and get rid of this for a second. And as you can see now, all we're doing here We've got our total accumulator called max. Okay, so you can call this whatever you want, right? But essentially, it's going to be the thing that we want to keep track of. Okay, so in the, in the previous example, when we're summing up, it's called total. In this case, it's called max. And this is resembling the max date, so the most recent date. Okay, and then we've got each individual date. And in this case, we've shorthanded it for D. Okay, so remember we're starting with dates at zero. 
Now, this means that day zero would be max, okay? So if we start off with this, what we're doing is we're actually comparing the first value against the max. And in this case, it's going to be a comparison. It's going to say, is this first one greater than the max? Well, in this case, it would be the same. So it would be actually false. So in this case, it's going to go ahead and we've got a ternary operator saying, if it's greater than the max, then store D as your new max value. Otherwise, keep max as it was. So it's going to go through each of these and it's going to check if the date was greater or less than the current max date. Okay, so in this case, it, what it's going to do is it's going to find that, that this one actually has the maximum date. So imagine when it reaches that point, D would be 0408 2022 in the form of a timestamp. In this case, it will say, is it greater than the max? Well, yes, it is. So in that case, the date now becomes the max. And then the max is now replaced with this value. Afterwards, it sees this one. It says, actually, that's not greater than the date. So we can keep the max as it was. After all of that work, we now have reduced this array into one value, okay? So if I was to log this out, so if we go ahead and see here, if I do max date, you'll now see we've got this timestamp and it doesn't look like the correct answer here. But if we convert this back to a date by saying new date, max date, and we convert it using the date uh, function to local date string, you will now see it actually picked out the correct date. So the most recent date was this one right here. And you can now see it's actually successfully picked out that date. Okay, so you can use reduce functions for more than just summing up things. You can use it just as we've shown here. Now, sure, you can use things like filtering, all that kind of stuff, but it's very important to know how and when to use a reduce function. You can, there's tons of use cases for reduce functions. We could be here for hours. The main thing to know is that it is more than just a summing up tool. You can use it in loads of different scenarios. So keep your mind open when you consider using the reduce function. So wrapping up this lesson with why do we need a reduce in the first place? Well, number one, it eliminates the need for loops to traverse an array. So as you saw in our previous example with the summing up, we didn't need the previous loop. So this kind of, you know, old school loop. Now we can go ahead and use a simple reduce function to actually accumulate our value. Number two, it allows for callbacks, which saves time when we're iterating through an array. So you saw in the date example, we can go ahead and actually have a arrow function callback and and we can go ahead and save ourselves a bunch of time by combining all of this into one sleek line of code. Number three, it allows multiple functions to be easily implemented on an array. So you saw loads of examples here. We did some, we showed you the min max. So in this case, we showed a max demo, but you could use this for all kinds of use cases. You could do it when you're trying to group different objects together, lots and lots of different use cases when you're using the reduce function. So I hope this lesson has been useful. If it has, let me know in the comments down below. And remember guys, it takes practice to get this right. To this day, I sometimes forget what the exact parameters were. So don't stress if you're not remembering this off the top of your head. Just remember the four parameters, the different options that you can use and how to write a reduce function. The rest will come with practice and with time. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Until next time, guys. Peace.